enlightenment the ultimate flowery enlightenment the ultimate flowery this is preface and a few other things when i had completed taosho buddha meditation volume 1 the goose was never in there was a question what is enlightenment this was a very interesting topic interesting question for me to speak on but one has to be very careful in speaking about enlightenment so that was simply a question when the title finished or while i finished the art of the response to the question it was decided that this complete topic of enlightenment needs more light therefore i decided to write enlightenment the ultimate flap in which many things have been explained about enlightenment along with the enlightenment of many masters how it happened to him for instance the masters like Raman's mother Maharishi Raman Buddha's disciple Anand Mahakashyap Samant Bhadra and many other masters so I take this morning an excerpt from that book enlightenment the ultimate flower i begin with the preface it is erroneous to say that i am enlightened why it is erroneous to say that i am enlightened it is because of the fallacy of the language and the happening of enlightenment enlightenment in the first place is the disappearance of ego desires and all that is tangible and connected with mind when all these things that are tangible to the mind vanish then who is there to see and even to say that i am enlightened is erroneous it would be better to say that enlightenment is the aura of enlightenment surrounds me even that will be erroneous but we have to say things enlightenment is the state of no mind it is a state when drop merges into the ocean when drop merges into the ocean in a way it loses its existence it does not exist as drop instead it exists as ocean first drop merges into ocean loses its significance and then the state of beyond enlightenment begins when drop ocean lends its quality its magnanimity its splendor its beauty to the drop but then a question arises if masters do not speak of enlightenment how seekers will get the first glimpse and this far away and this first far away glimpse is relevant for seeker first of all enlightenment comes to you like a far away glimpse you are sitting down you have you have visited a place you reach the new place sometimes in the night 
he could not see outside. Then in the morning with the first dawn, you peep through the window. You get a glimpse of a far away beautiful place. It is now only a glimpse. You see a beautiful mountain hill. So you inquire from someone who is familiar, the person says that is the most beautiful hill and you must go and visit. This is the first glimpse. It comes to you, it may fade away. You may get lost in other merrymaking activities taking place at the hotel where you are staying. In order to have that glimpse crystallize in you, you have to begin your journey to that place. Glimpse is one thing, this first glimpse is very important. So what I am speaking of through this book, Enlightenment, the Ultimate Flowering, is giving you the first glimpse of what it is. And it is for this reason that Masters speak of. But then a question arises if Masters do not speak of enlightenment, how seekers will get the first glimpse. And this first far away glimpse is relevant for the seekers as a result for your inner search to attain a new impetus. I am speaking to you on various aspects of enlightenment and also experience of the masters who have attained to enlightenment. Enlightenment is not ritual. The moment you make enlightenment ritual, you have moved away from reality. There are certain things that you have to understand about enlightenment. Very often it is asked if enlightenment is accidental. It is something very significant to understand that enlightenment is always accidental. It does not mean that you do not have to try for it. There is another equally important thing that you have to remember. Certainly your trying is not going to bring it. Your effort is not going to achieve it. But making the effort, searching in all directions, in every possible way, someday it happens. Certainly not because of your efforts but because of your intense urge, a tremendous intensity like a flame within you. You begin your efforts, then this beginning of the efforts is very imperative. And then when efforts reach its pinnacle, you have to drop that. And then suddenly it happens, it is it always happens accidentally. You cannot say it happened because I did it. Otherwise things would have been very simple. Enlightenment is not a ritual. However, the master is no more and also the message, also with the passage of time, the inner search becomes a mere ritual. Look at the Buddhist monks. All are making it a ritual. For example, Buddha was sitting under a Bodhi tree when enlightenment happened. It is in every Buddhist monastery, there are Bodhi trees and they are sitting waiting for enlightenment to happen as if Bodhi tree has something to do with it. Certainly the tree had experienced a magnanimity. A great incident happened under this tree to someone when he was sitting. The tree remembers that. The memory is there in its consciousness. But that does not mean sitting under the Bodhi tree one can get enlightened. 
Buddha had eaten that evening a sweet made out of milk and rice. Buddhist monk think that has something to do with the enlightenment soul. For them, it has become very special spiritual food. Before sitting for meditation, they will eat this rice and milk porridge known as ghee, rice pudding. That is actually the name of the sweet. But enlightenment has nothing to do with Bodhi tree or the milk pudding. Buddha was sitting in lotus posture for enlightenment. Probably that was the most convenient posture for Buddha. So every Buddhist monk sits in the same posture. Perhaps the posture has something to do with it. The posture has nothing to do with Buddha's enlightenment. But millions throughout history have been sitting in that posture, torturing their legs. And now the Westerners have started learning yoga posture, in which the lotus posture is the most important because Buddha became enlightened while sitting in that posture. For a Westerner who has been sitting in, a, in his inner chair, this his whole life the lotus posture is difficult in a cold country you do not sit on the ground on the bare ground as buddha did he his legs are in tremendous torture but he tries hard it takes almost three months for him to attain to the lotus posture but only to the lotus posture and then he will he waits his whole life for enlightenment sitting in lotus posture it does not happen that way when you look into the existence of enlightenment or the ex existence nothing is repeated when you look into the experience of enlightenment one, you will find the uniqueness with each master. Existence never repeats itself. The experience of enlightenment of each master is totally different. Rumi danced for 35 hours continuously and in that whirling he became aware of the unmoving within him. Rumi became enlightened. This was the unique way and unique only because enlightenment happened to Rumi that way. Sitting under the Bodhi tree, Buddha attained Nirvana. This is another unique way. Only because of Buddha and now look at the Buddhist monks knowing this, following this like a ritual. Look at the followers of Rumi. They go on whirling throughout the life as a ritual. In that certainly they become a great performers but not enlightened. The world has produced only countable enlightened ones because of the human mind that always shelters in rituals and thus the superficial. I repeat this, the world has produced only countable enlightened ones because of the human mind that always shelters in rituals and thus the superficial. So it is not a certain sequence of causes that bring enlightenment. Your search, your intense longing and your readiness to do anything Altogether, perhaps they create a certain aroma around you in which that great accident becomes possible. But you cannot manage it. Each seeker has to begin from the beginning in his unique way.
you cannot learn by watching somebody that is what all the religions have been doing there is a certain prayer a certain posture a certain ritual and a certain way, way of breathing nothing helps i have always loved a small story of leo tolstoy from russia the archbishop of russia became very much annoyed because on a small island three men had come to be known to the population as saints now this is against christianity in christianity a saint has to be certified by the church as if to be a saint is a degree a title the church has to ordain the sainthood on the appropriate person the english word saint comes from sanction when the church gives the sanction one becomes a saint the archbishop was very angry that without his sanction these three people had become known as saints and thousands of people were going to touch their feet and seek their blessings naturally this was making him very angry one day he finally decided to go and see what kind of saints these were he went in a motor boat reached the island it was very small island only those three people lived there it was early morning and those three were sitting under a tree they looked simple and educated and illiterate people the archbishop on the way was very nervous about facing these three saints who have influenced thousands of people but now he saw there was no problem as these looks these looked idiots he went there and they all touched the feet of the archbishop he was well satisfied he said do you think you are saints they said we are uneducated illiterate poor people how can we think of such high things they are not for us what but what can we do people go on coming we try to prevent them we tell them that they should not they should go to you but they would not listen the archbishop inquired authoritatively what is your prayer the three looked at each other and nash one said you say the other said you say the archbishop said anybody can say it there is no harm but it start they said we feel very embarrassed because it is not really a prayer but we have made it up the archbishop was really angry you have invented the prayer the archbishop murmured what is the prayer one of them said if you really insist so we have to say it but we are feeling very embarrassed because the prayer is not a very great prayer it is simple our prayer is you are three we are three have mercy on us remember these simple words you are three the father the son and the holy ghost you are three we are three the three saints three illiterate have mercy on us even the archbishop in his anger had to laugh he said great so this is your prayer 
those poor people said we are ready to learn if you teach us the right prayer we will try but you will have but it should not be long because we may forget it or we may make mistake or get confused our prayer is so simple we cannot forget it we cannot make any mistake the archbishop read the whole prayer of the orthodox church of russia it was too long these poor people said it is too long please read it again the third time they said just one more time so we can remember archbishop was very happy that these idiots are no threat now there is no problem i can convince people that they know nothing not even the prayer of the church they touched archbishop's feet thanked him and told him that there is no need for him to come he should send a message and they would have come to him why should he take such trouble any time he wanted he should just send the message and they should come to the church itself and they would come to the church itself very happy and contented the archbishop left but when he was just in the middle of the lake he saw those three running on the water coming towards him saying stop we have forgotten the prayer just one more once more repeat just once more repeat the archbishop looked at them they were standing on the water running on the water he must have been a man of some intelligence he said forgive me your prayer is right you continue your prayer your prayer has reached my prayer has not reached you are really saints it does not matter whether church has sanctioned you or not sanctions are needed for those who are not really saints the very existence approves of your prayer just forgive me that i have interfered in your life this is a story from leo tall story there are five writers from russia leo tall story maxim gorky and the one who wrote brothers karam karamazov if i have to make a list of 10 great novelists throughout the world five of them will be from russia a tremendously beautiful insight has been presented through this story by leo tolstoy it is possible with purity of heart the serenity of mind and with calmness of the being any word uttered becomes a prayer even this becomes a prayer you are three we are three have mercy on this have mercy upon us and the great accident happens but you cannot copy it that indeed is the problem you go to an island and sit under a tree and say you are three we are three have mercy on us and nothing will happen within an hour or two you will get bored and you will say that this does not work it is not a question of methodology existence has allowed enlightenment in so many different ways to people all that we can say is that certain qualities not very particular methods are needed but certain qualities when they come to meet within you function not as a cause 
but something happens because of their presence. This is what in science is called a catalytic agent. They function as a catalytic agent. Existence has allowed enlightenment in so many different ways to be. So many different ways. So many different ways. All that we can say is that a certain quality, not a very particular method that is needed, but certain qualities when they come to meet within you, function not as a cause, but something happens because of their presence. This is what in science is called a catalytic agent. They function as a catalyst. For example, you know water is made by hydrogen and oxygen. But you go on mixing hydrogen and oxygen and water will not be made. If you divide water, you will only find hydrogen and oxygen. Two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. Then what is missing? Why even when mixing them in proper proportion, H2O, the water is still not happening. For that, the presence of electricity is needed. Magnes dioxide acts as catalyst, the electricity that is needed. It does not cause it. It is a totally different phenomena than casualty. However, its presence is a catalytic agent. Without its presence, oxygen and hydrogen can remain together for eternity, but water will not happen. So when you see the silver lines in the dark clouds as lightning, it is not just for painters and people who understand beauty and are sensible and are sensitive to aesthetic values. That silver line is nothing but the presence of electricity that transforms hydrogen and oxygen into water. But scientists were surprised in the beginning because it does not take any part, just its presence is needed. But without its presence, nothing happens. So I can say to you that enlightenment is always an accident, not an effect produced by a certain cause. Otherwise, things would have been very easy. Everybody could have produced the cause, all the necessary ingredients, and would have become enlightened. If lotus posture is regarded, he will do it. If it is standing on head is needed, he will do it. If sitting under the bodhi tree is needed, he will do it. In other words, men have always been able to do it. You can. But the problem is that it is not a cause and effect phenomenon. So I can describe only a certain presence which functions as a catalytic, catalytic agent. Meditation creates that catalytic agent. Create a totally silent mind with no thought, a totally relaxed body with no tension, a totally empty heart with no moods or feelings or sentiments or emotions, and then simply wait. Simply wait. Meditation creates the catalytic agent, create a totally silent mind with no thoughts, a totally relaxed body with no tensions, a totally empty heart with no moods or feelings or sentiments 
or emotions and then simply wait. In this silence, serenity, just wait. And then out of no way, something explodes in you. Yes, it is an explosion. Indeed, explosion of light, love and tremendous bliss which remains with you forever. You cannot lose it even if you want to. Nobody has can become unenlightened again. That is not possible. Once enlightenment has happened, the explosion has happened within you. It cannot be reversed. Alike other titles of Tao Shobhuta, this title, Enlightenment, the Ultimate Flowering, is continued effort and commitment for the transformation of human consciousness. Whether embodied or unembodied, the enlightened one has dissolved in existence like a drop merging in the ocean. And then ocean lends its magnanimity, its splendor and cosmic oneness to the enlightened one. The indomitable energy that enlightenment brings acts as catalysts in the process of enlightenment. The mere presence clears the path of inward journey. Buddha represents the highest peak of consciousness. Buddha is the experiment in the totality of consciousness. Buddha represents the fusion of man's of one's being or blossoming as enlightenment. Buddha represents the fruition of one's being or the blossoming as enlightenment. Buddha represents a totally different kind of spirituality, pure and sublime. Buddha is the most godless yet most godly being ever walked on the earth. Buddha propounded the religionless religion. Never before this happened that someone spoke of human transformation in such profound yet uncontaminated way. Over the years, each time the message of Buddha overflowed, the need was there to preserve the message in as many forms as may be possible, but it never happened as time was not right. In Diamond Sutra, Subhati asks, will there be any beings in the future period, in the last time, in the last epoch, in the last 500 years, at the time of the collapse of the good doctrine, who when these words of the Sutra are being taught, will understand their truth? The Lord replied, Do not speak the Subhuti. Yes, even then there will be beings, who when these words who when these words of the Sutra are being taught will understand their truth. For even at that time, Subhuti, there will be Bodhisattvas and these Bodhisattvas, Subhuti, will not be such as have honored only one single Buddha, nor such as have planted their roots of merit under one single Buddha alone. On the contrary, Subhuti, those Bodhisattvas who when these words of the Sutras are being taught, will find even one single thought of serene faith be such as have honored many hundreds of thousands of Buddhas such as have planted their roots of 
married and the many hundreds of thousands of buddhas known they are sumati to tathagat all these buddhas that will happen at any future time are known to tathagat through his bodhi sattva through his bodhi cognition through his bodhi cognition all these subati are known to tathagat seen they are subati by the tathagat with his buddha eye fully known they are subati to that subhuti by the tathagat with his buddha eye known they are subhuti to the tathagat through his buddha cognition seen they are subhuti by the tathagat with his buddha eye fully known they are subhuti to tathagat and they all subhuti will begin and acquire an immeasurable and incalculable heap of merit therefore subhuti listen well and attentively the buddha be the energy field that the enlightened ones have created shall continue to act as catalyst in the process of transformation of human consciousness this is what buddha had assured subhuti and through subhuti to the entire humanity that will ever be born that will come into existence the buddha being the energy field that the enlightened ones have created shall continue to act as catalyst in the process of transformation of human consciousness such as the assurance of the buddhas when the gates of heaven opened for buddha he refused to enter until the entire existence sentient and insentient attains to enlightenment the indomitable energy of enlightenment shall continue to act as catalyst buddham sharanam gacchami a man of awareness never hesitates in taking risks if that be necessary to save consciousness he has found the shores of awareness and then it will not matter how deep he may be in the waters he has the shores of awareness in sight he may gamble but only on the periphery he may become a gambler but he is just acting he may become a gambler but he is just acting within it was only a drama he remained aware each moment and of each act he may pretend that he was drinking alcohol but he never drink and who is in the pub who in the pub is so aware to notice that you are drinking or not the world is a big pub where everyone is drunkard in their own ignorance and thinks that the other is lost other has deviated from the path such is the situation of you the so called religious ones without the inner vision they go on making judgments from outer behaviors such is the situation of you the so called religious ones without the inner vision they go on making judgments from outer behavior so even if he was actually drinking water and just keeping a bottle of alcohol in front of him would the drunkards have noticed it would those who are lost in the ignorance of the world 
will have, would have noticed it and if they had noticed would they say they were really drunkards prostitutes danced and our all eyes were on the prostitutes but the mind was somewhere else established in consciousness will he be then committing sin certainly not sin is when there is unconsciousness such is the man of awareness he enters into the pool of the world only to save him for him there is no risk in anything he is like the lotus leaf that cannot be moistened by dew drop is still you want to know how to recognize an enlightened one the words of the enlightened one overflow spontaneously he does not make any effort the choice of words their arrangement and the melody creates an energy field that cannot be put in words words come from the source it is the inner beauty harmony and bliss that assume words to manifest innerness fresh and new after enlightenment each word that overflows is like a coin freshly minted or the flower that has just blossomed it becomes a scripture that will continue to be the beacon light there is something mystical in the overflow of the enlightened one for which no words are sufficient to explain however certainly there is something indescribable that happens that these words create as presence through such compositions and overflows the enlightened one creates such level of beauty through the use and mastery of the musical rhythm and rhyme with the play of words that the reader and listener not only can appreciate the wisdom contained in these compositions but also reach levels of ecstasy and mystical energy that is seldom found in other such compositions certainly these connect you to your be i call these as meditations the mastery of rhyme and rhythm is such that very often he creates a new vocabulary using the same old words yet creating a new feeling that is associated with the insights of enlightenment furthermore furthermore often he creates such mastery of play on words are at such times he uses the same word with different accent or vowel twice or even thrice in the same composition with a different meaning each time i repeat this the mastery of rhyme and rhythm is such that very often he creates a new vocabulary using the same old words yet creating new feelings that are associated with the insights of an light furthermore furthermore often he has such mastery of play on words or at other times he uses the same word with a different accent or vowel twice or even thrice in the same composition with a different meaning each time one cannot help but marvel at the linguistic mastery that the enlightened one displays through various compositions and meditations that he has created one can simply drown in the presence of one can simply drown 
in the essence and presence of it and thus get connected to your being in any case the end result is seen the experience of the artistic beauty of these compositions voice modulations rhythm and ecstatic energy the alpha brain wave patterns all combined together with the mental understanding of the wisdom can we take the listener to the state of meditation this is as close as one can get to the mystical experience itself without actually being present with the enlightened master in other words his presence pervades each composition just as consciousness pervades the entire cosmos in other words his presence pervades each composition just as consciousness pervades the entire cosmos buddham sharanam gacha sangham sharanam gacha dham sharanam gacha buddham sharanam gacha dham sharanam gacha sangham sharanam gacha buddham sharanam gacha only this much for this morning